And we are back, and we just finished a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas, currently streaming on HBO Max. This film is from 2011. It's rated R, and it clocks in at one hour and 30 minutes. This is the Christmas version of the Harold and Kumar story, and this this is apparently, according to IMDb, six years after their Guantanamo Bay adventure. And Harold and Kumar have sort of parted ways. They've drifted apart. Drifted apart and are brought back together. On a quest to save Christmas. On a quest to save Christmas. I couldn't think of what to say. Thank you for (laughs) chiming in there. Not as good as the first one, but still kind of, yeah, I don't think anything can top the first one, but this was still kind of fun. And it's interesting. uh, It's a 3D, I guess it's one of those 3D movies and you could see where all the 3D action happens. Uh, It didn't take away from enjoying the film. It's silly. It's fun. It's very, very risque. Oh God, it's so dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think I turned to you at one point and I was like, could this be made now? This is from 2011, which isn't that long ago, but I feel like the tone of things has changed drastically. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, I mean... There is so much in this film that I don't think could pass today. Not really. I mean, uh, you couldn't... You couldn't. You definitely couldn't do the the stuff with Neil Patrick Harris. In, yes. In the, the, the Especially with room. the Me Too stuff. And, and like and like laugh about it because right. that, that would you'd probably have to like put up trigger warnings and and stuff like that yeah. for that sort of thing because yeah. it's a different time. It's, now. A, it's a way different time. You know more about it. This this, this movie came out, I guess, pre Harvey Weinstein's Steen's demise. Yeah. Uh, and like. Back then, like all that stuff was just like rumored and 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 innuendo, allegedly innuendo and and all that. But now that you you have you know victims and stuff stepping Verified. forward and, yeah. and saying, "Oh, this this happened pretty to much kind of happened to me." I don't think we should be laughing about it. So that sort of stuff that wouldn't fly. The uh, some of the racial the stuff. racial humor based on stereotypes. I it, as lax as I am, I found it a little cringy. I mean, I laughed, but. Yeah, I mean, I I, <clears throat> I laughed at it too. I I gotta be honest, a lot of that, especially in a, in this particular context, I don't have a problem with that. It's not like as though the sort of like racial humor where you're racial humor when you're when you're making fun of a, a specific racial group, it's sort of like you're degrading them or down, that's like the bad sort of racial humor. But this is sort of more like the the Archie Bunker style racial humor where it's like you're you're kind of like. You're you're laughing at the ignorance of the person saying it, mm-hmm. and the stupidity of the comment. Oh, they all look alike. To, see, I told yeah. you they all looked alike, and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. Yeah, or, yeah. or oh, you, eighty-seven cents. See, you, they didn't get it all out of you. That I in this context for what it is. If that is getting you upset, you need to take a you step back. Not only need to take a step back, but you need to really under find something more important to care about. A little jab at a specific cultural thing or a racial thing or or anything like that that's harmless you really need to get your priorities right this isn't the holocaust this is this is a slight joke at spanish people or asian people or jewish people or russians or what i mean they were hitting everybody yeah 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 <laughs> but again like i feel like this movie it's funny i i mean i've i've heard internet chatter about oh could Tropic Thunder be made in this day and age? Yeah, like, like I mean, Tropic Thunder is, is the, yeah, that's the example that they use mainly mainly because of But of I feel Robert like Downey this Jr. one is even more egregious than Tropic Thunder. Yeah, because this this is, these people, like when Danny Trejo says something racist yeah. about Asians, it's because his character is racist towards Asians. Right. Tropic Thunder. It was the whole blackface thing with Robert Downey Jr. But they were making a they were making a legitimate point. Like right. I, Robert Downey Jr.'s character wasn't a racist. He was method. a method actor snob, and they were yeah. making fun of that. that. Right, right, right. And they were making fun of Hollywood. I mean, I forgot what his name Al Pacino or, or <laughs> Al Pacino. That was his character. He said the the thing. He's like the, they give you. They finally make a good role for a black man and they give it to an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That was so good. That's such a great movie. That's like, oh, yeah, Hollywood was like that. Yeah. It was. And the, I mean, you can't say the R word, right? Never go full. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, that would never play now. Oh, my God. Yeah, there, some that would be like a trigger warning on that one. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the whole thing. Trigger warning. So, trigger warning. so this one too, I feel like, I mean, like you the, said, I mean, is, they go after is, everybody in it's, this. It's thing. funny saying a film from eleven years ago is a film from a bygone era. But but yeah the, yeah here I we mean, are <laughs> things things have moved quickly yeah as, as uh, what was it as Ron Burgundy would say boy that escalated fast. <laughs> Even something like that. I mean, even something. Yeah, I guess you could say because because of the the sexism, it told an interesting story. Yeah, and, and that was the point of it. Yeah, and it I was feel like overcoming like, that sexist. How are you going to overcome the sexism when you don't show the sexism, and especially in such a crazy, lighthearted way with complete morons? Yeah. I mean, you're not supposed to be like, yeah, t- stick it to them, Ron. You just sh- <laughs> show those bitches where they belong. <laughs> You're, nobody's <laughs> cheering for Ron Burgundy at this at, in those movies. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think that comedy and comedians are like such reflective mirrors of society. When you hear like Bill Burr speak about things and it's yeah, like I mean, he's he, so on the money. He's on the money and he, he gets it and... I mean, some people, yeah, they complain. I mean, uh, I think anyone he when he hosted Saturday Night Live, there was oh, always yeah. people complaining, "Oh, he's sexist, he's racist." But no. he's not really saying anything that. I mean, call him a liar. Try it. <laughs> it you, when you really think about it, no, he's he's making a joke about the way society is and yeah. the way people are behaving, and and some of it is just really dead on the money it's on the money it, it's it's shining a mirror upon how absurd like, hypersensitive people have become to the point where it's just like i'm not happy unless i'm angry about something yeah yeah it's come on yeah get, get over it i'm gonna it. use the internet to complain yeah i own wine you know what i don't and i gotta be honest i feel like him, Half of these people don't give a shit. They just want to bitch about something. Sure, sure. Because sure. their life is empty unless they are bitching about something on the internet. Right. And then they find that other, it's because it's not like a huge number, but they find that other oh, nut job yeah. that well, agrees with I mean, them and then they oh, feel vindicated. Crazy attracts crazy. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, it, it used to be just the guy on the corner wearing the sandwich board with the bell screaming about doom and, and how... I the remember, end is coming. <laughs> the end is coming, or, or I mean, this is this is a page from my life as a child. How Ronald Reagan Reagan stole my legs. I literally heard some guy screaming that. Oh gosh! And now you put a green screen behind you, and that same guy, he has a million followers, and he's yeah. he's got his own line of protein powder and dick pills. Yeah, we're so. looking at you, Alex Jones. <laughs> um. But getting back to this, wow, we yeah, went we, we went kind of sideways on this. What did you think of a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas? I enjoyed it. It was silly. It was stupid. It was fun. I mean, yeah. sometimes you want to see just a stupid, silly, stupid, movie. raunchy, dirty comedy. And yeah. this fit the bill. Fit the bill 100%. I guess I am getting a little old because sometimes when I hear them saying certain things, I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of rough. <laughs> but it's sort of like me too. I mean, when he when Danny Trejo says, "Oh, they all look the same," I'm like, Eek. no, that that. Don't, I mean, I laugh, but I was like, oof, that, that that one didn't bother. I was more talking about like the the jerk friend with the glasses who's just like, yeah, I'm gonna deflower oh, this bitch. Uh, he was just the such a sleazy little piece of little shit, piece of crap. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded if the Russian guy got a got a hold of him. <laughs> Played by the lovely Elias Kateas. Yes, the Russian guy. What about, I mean, not to go back, but talking about themes that are kind of cringy now. Baby getting high. That, I, I thought that was hilarious. I didn't have any problem with that because it's so off the wall ridiculous. The kid is literally crawling on the ceiling. He's <laughs> moving at like, like Speedy Gonzalez, shooting past people. <laughs> The, the, the standing on the table with the hand that that kid she was that hilarious. kid was great yeah she that was kid hilarious was great I love that little kid <laughs> and like the guy's just like oh my god she's crashing we got to give her more blow <laughs> <laughs> it was 
It was so, and you don't expect that at all. Right, right, It's right. just like, hey, we got to bring my kid along with me. And like within 15 minutes, the kid's like hot boxed in a car <laughs> with a, while, while Kumar's <laughs> lighting up a, a, a joint. <laughs> and then she's like, I got the munchies. Yeah, I got the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, I like the characters of Harold and Kumar. Yes. I like they have the straight laced Harold, Harold. Or, a straight laced as a person like Harold could be. And, yeah. And Kumar's just a fucking wreck. nuts. <laughs> I love when his, he's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna pour a little bit on," and the whole cap falls <laughs> off, and scalding hot water just splashes Harold's genitals. <laughs> like that's 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 like Laurel and Hardy type. Yes, humor, absolutely, you know? absolutely. But a little you know, more risque, obviously. Oh, obviously, yeah. There was no <laughs> genitals being mangled in Har- Har- uh, no, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> so. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Something like this, it couldn't happen now. I don't No, I don't think you could make a really like a a comedy, well, at least not with those type th- those types of humor. I mean, you you'll still especially the 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 stuff with Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, some of it you'd get away with, like, the whole dance routine where, like, the women's legs are all splitting and then he lifts his head up and wipes his mouth. <laughs> that's, ju- that's just sex comedy. That's, a, that, that's sex comedy. But the casting couch thing. Yeah, that's rough. That probably could trigger somebody or, yeah. or somebody. Yeah. But uh, the racial humor in this. Isn't that crazy. It's not that crazy. I mean,. But every, every there once in a while, are every some once in a while, that are going to be mortally wounded by it. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's fu- it's funny watching some like I think like a a thing right now is is like reaction videos for people. It's like, oh, let's watch this person's. F- they've never seen Blazing Saddles before. Let's see what they have to say. And, yeah, and, yeah. And they they're like stunned by the the type of the comedy in, in Blazing Saddles. We grew up with that, and we were just like. It's it's, fine. it's silly, ridiculous. The, it also is playing up the fact that the people saying and doing these things are the ones we're laughing at. We're not yeah. laughing at the the joke that they're saying. We're laughing at them, them, right? And the fact that they're so stupid. So I just wanted to also backtrack. We originally were introduced to Harold and Kumar in 2004 with Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, which you and I saw in the theater. We saw in the theater late at night, like midnight showing, and, and a, some guy brought his whole brought, family, <laughs> brought was children, like four year olds, six year olds, to an down. R-rated movie, yeah. and we were highly scandalized. <laughs> but it was great. We I loved, mean, we, we were. I mean, we're pretty lax, but I don't think that <laughs> we would have let our. I mean, how old was that kid? That kid was a toddler, like three or four or five. There was like I think there was like two or three kids, and like I said, like one. They were the, maybe little. maybe like four and six. Yeah, they were. Little. They were they were little kids. Yeah. but then again, four and six, they're not going to remember any of that. That's true. Like if you if we spoke to those kids now, because they're adults now. They're adults now. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ! They would probably Holy be like, "Holy fuck! I don't, I don't that movie that is almost old. twenty years old." Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. We saw it. We saw it on the Alpine, and we, we saw it in Bay the Al- Ridge. When, yeah, when we lived in Bay Ridge. Yeah. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Mary. That movie is almost 20 years old. How is that possible? I just it's married di- you. It's disturbing when you see, like, like I remember in, what was it, Civil War and Spider-Man's just like, hey, guys, remember that old movie? Oh, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about Empire Strikes Back, and I'm just like, fuck you. Fuck you, Peter I love Parker. Spider-Man, but <laughs> fuck you, Spider-Man. How dare you call that an old movie? But um, it is an old movie. Yeah. When did that come out? Okay, 77. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, Empire Strikes Back. I that was like in the like uh, 80 Star or something. Star Wars came out in no. I yes, yes. I think 80 or 81 cuz then Jedi came out in 83, right? Yeah. So good lord, that is And the first one came out 77. That's a that's, that's over oh, 40. Let's not years talk old. about it. Let's not talk about it. So yeah, I I agree with you. I mean, I think this is silly, mindless just hilarity, but this is obviously not for everyone. No, so, you you have to have you you have to be able to tolerate like dirty comedy, like yeah. like raunchy comedy, and like very raunchy. Like I'll compare this to to Spy, which is great. Great, it's, it has its raunchy moments. But this is but more. This is, this is way, way more, more than, than, this than is, that. This is yeah. way more than that. Yeah. yeah, this is more base moments. Yes, so, uh, I mean they like you said they take 
shots at everybody here. Yeah. So I nobody's I think, yeah. nobody's off the hook nobody's in this movie. <laughs> and it's the thing that's nice is, it, is it's done well. It's done yeah. in, all in service of telling the story. A, a a good story about reconnecting with old friends yeah. and becoming a more responsible person. And Except doing, for NPH, who is like, just uh, yeah, reprehensible. N- NPH <laughs> never changes. He is the same <laughs> loathsome character he was from the first one. <laughs> Uh, but like Harold and Kumar, they reconnect, they reconnect, they evolve as the story goes on. And Uh, Kumar grows up a little. Kumar grows up a little. Harold has that nice little speech where he says, I'm not doing this because I have to do it. I'm doing it because I want to do it because making Maria, my wife, my, my my wife loves her father and I love my wife. And it's like making Maria happy makes me happy, happy. makes me happy, which is true. If you really love somebody, you. When they are happy, you are happy, at least for me. Me as well. So you got, you got that. And, you know, it's a, it's a really silly Christmas story. I mean, Santa shows up. He gets shot in the head. And then he <laughs> says goodnight, <laughs> while, he says goodnight smoking. While, while smoking a candy cane striped bong. bong. <laughs> no wonder he's so jolly yeah. and <laughs> happy all the time. <laughs> We get introduced to Waffle Bot. It was oh, awesome. Why don't they make that? Yeah. I would totally buy a Waffle Bot. Yeah. I thought he was so cute. He's got like that Cylon voice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what was it? Pancakes are gay. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. It's fun, but like I like we said, it's it's an acquired you, taste. You <laughs> have to be Okay with, okay with very dirty humor. This isn't yeah. just, just a raunchy comedy. This is very raunchy. Yeah. Very yeah. dirty. Very, yeah. Very, very there, blue. Yeah. Penises are seen <laughs> and hurt badly. Yes. Yeah. There is use of drug paraphernalia. There's use of drug paraphernalia. There's objectification of women. Women. Uh, by Christ himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah, this really yeah. goes after everybody. What? I mean, still. The lesbian, the, the nuns the lesbian showering. Nuns. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, still not as good as the first one, but a, a decent third effort. I'm. We've never, we should probably watch Guantanamo Bay yeah, but never at some point. One. But yeah. what do you think? One to ten. What would you give this? i give it a seven. I too would give it a seven. Yeah. I think it's really decent. It would, I mean, it 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 good. flows quickly. It moves fast. It's just mayhem from start to finish. It's just mayhem. It's not your typical Christmas movie. Don't yes. bust this out around in front the of Christmas grandma. tree with grandma and the kids. Jeez. Absolutely Control not. Control yourself. But if you're young, you're single, you bring some friends over, you're having some some fun. This but is you definitely pop that on in the background and laugh about it. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely yeah. one to watch. Just don't be squeamish. I know some of the younger people. Yeah. Oh my God, they're making fun of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this is not your usual Christmas fair. But if you're in the market for something raunchy and crazy and balls to the wall bananas. Yeah. This is a surefire bet. It's currently streaming on HBO Max. This is, again, Harold and Kum- uh, a very Harold and Kumar 3D, 3D Christmas. Christmas. This was directed by Todd Strauss Schulzen, written by John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg. Hopefully yeah. we didn't butcher your names. Too yes, much. sorry if we butchered your names, but... Uh, so those are the people responsible for all this craziness. Kudos to them. Good writing. I mean, it's not winning any awards, but yeah. it tells a fun story. It moves quick. And that's what you want with a comedy. Again, this is an hour and 30 minutes. You can definitely devote yeah. 90 minutes of your life to just absolute insanity. <laughs> and it delivers. And Neil Patrick Harris, I loved that they kind of resurrected his career with Harold and Kumar go to White Castle because I hadn't seen him in yeah, like he, forever he before that movie. And that movie put him back on the map. I mean, when yeah. he is snorting cocaine off that <laughs> prostitute's ass <laughs> in that car that's driving the itself. Of, yeah. He's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. That was nuts. <laughs> That was a fun movie. That was yeah. a fun, fun movie. I mean, we, I, I, 
Did we know? Or I, were we at that point where we were just going to the movies every weekend? I think we were just going to the movies every weekend. And I think I may have read that people so, thought that it was very funny. Yeah. But I didn't really hear too much about it. Yeah. And so we just went and saw it. And we and were, we were, we were like blown away. By blown away how, how funny it was. Yeah. And I mean, then I think, did we rent it? And then I found out that it was those people that wrote uh, oh, that, right. show that show that I loved. loved. Oh, what was the name of that show? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was like I think it was like a season on the WB. It yeah. might have been the CW at the time. I think it was the WB at the time. But yeah, it was a Channel Eleven show. I think it lasted a season. It was like told through the vantage point of this it had girl. Fred Willard on it. Right? Had Fred Willard in it and. Yeah, she was like the narrator. She had this crazy family in this small town. For some reason, the only one I remember is what I think her parents are both involved in like the local theater production of Hair, which has nudity I, I, in it. I wonder if that show is streaming anywhere because you never hear about that. No. It's like it disappeared into the WB graveyard. It did. I, I You know what's funny? I think I tried to find it and I couldn't. Like I even saw like... The original Roswell with um, Sherry Appleby, like that's on YouTube. Sorry if I outed somebody who put stuff up, <laughs> copyright and stuff. <laughs> like that was up. I think I even rewatched the first season. I think, well, actually maybe there was only one season of that Aliens in America show that I loved also, uh -huh. but I could never find Maybe It's Me. Never. It was like. I made it up, but I know that I didn't. No, no, I remember it existing. Yeah. yeah. And I remember Fred Willard being on it. Yeah. The late great Fred Willard. Oh. <laughs> Andy Daly. Yes. <laughs> I knew you were thinking of that. Yes. But he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. If you if you're into naughty stuff, this is for you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. This episode of the podcast is dedicated to all the fantastic women that make up my tribe. I love you and adore you all so much. A special shout out to Veli, to my buddy Joanne D. Happy early birthday, buddy. My buddy Rashima, my buddy Shay, my buddy Yvette, Valencia, Robin, Ashlyn, May, Auntie Erica, I was who I always have to give a shout out to, who is the absolute engineer and architect of my eternal happiness. Thank you so much. My buddy Suzette, who I've loved reconnecting with. And as always, Sadler, love you. Love you all. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me, for the support, for the guidance, for the wisdom, for the laughs, everything. I am nothing without you. Okay. All right. That's it from us. And we will bid you all a eh? good night. Good night. <laughs>